hope. Let's say a little prayer here that we can make this happen. Okay, I think, oh no. Facebook, can you still see me? I think this is too much box. I'm all kinds of a wreck today, legitimately. I can't believe what I'm gonna have to use right now. Lester's dude wipes right here and they are the perfect height for my, cam <laughs> my camera. <laughs> <sighs> hey y'all welcome to time out tuesday i think that there's a snafu going on with youtube i'm hoping that i just fixed it maybe i just fixed it, it says there's one person here so that's thank you for joining me um facebook thank you for being patient while i tried to figure out you know sort my life out figure out what's going on the donkeys laughed hysterically at me while I was trying to get YouTube up and running. YouTube kicked me out at first. It's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. It wouldn't be a timeout Tuesday if we didn't have some sort of show to get us started. So, all is well. Uh, someone also just pulled up in the driveway. Super hoping that that's Lester that is uh, back from JL. And if not... Who knows may show who may show up on here. So let's start with a cocktail. Don't you want like let's let's start out with a cocktail and then well, I have a few stories to tell. Okay. All right. So okay. So cocktail of the evening. Oh boy. YouTube. We're YouTube is rocking because the computer's all jacked up and okay. It's gonna be fine. It's be fine. I grab some pineapple juice and some whipped vodka, which allegedly takes taste like Dole Whip whenever you put it together. Allegedly. So we're gonna give this a whirl. I didn't have a mini bottle of whipped. Sad, but true. Maybe Steve does. Uh, oh no! And I didn't just I didn't shake the pineapple. I used to be a bartender. That was a point in my life that. You know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And when you have to work more than one job to be able to make ends meet and you're young, uh, bartending can be a great way to make money. I bartended at the American Legion in Breeze, Illinois. Let's give this a little splash. That looks good. And look how thoughtful I was. Brought out a spoon this time. Kind of a big deal. I hear Lester, and I know it's Lester because now I see Trixie. Yeah. <laughs> but I hear Lester singing, getting out of the truck. So hopefully we can hear him here in a little bit. Anyway, cheers to y'all to Time Out Tuesday. 10 out of 10 on this drink. This is fabulous. Might be... Might be my new summer drink. No joke. Pinnacle whipped vodka, which is the cheap vodka, because that's who I am, and some pineapple juice. Super delicious. Hey, Chrissy. Okay. <sighs> yes, I bartended in Breeze, Illinois for a few years, um, and the, the Legion was in the basement, and... There weren't a lot of mixed drinks that happened there. It was mostly 90 cent draft beers at the time that I served. They opened at one o'clock in the afternoon and they were open until there wasn't any more business. Sometimes that was 10 p.m. Sometimes that was midnight. Sometimes that was 2 a.m. All depended. And every night I would get up the next morning and be at work at 6 a.m. So as grateful as I was for some of those late nights that had great tips, sometimes you weren't so grateful because it was the second night in a row and you were exhausted. And that was definitely a part of my life that I'm grateful for, but also grateful that I am no longer doing that. Um, although I will say that some of the stories that probably came out of that, that, like that and those times, not stories about what I did, stories about you know, other people's stories and other things that I over <laughs> overheard or participated in probably would have made some really great videos now that I think about it. Anyway, yeah, terrific drink. Absolutely terrific. Um, it was a big snake week here. <laughs> 
I am still trying to come down from the fact that two nights ago, what day is it? It's Tuesday. So Sunday night, I can't believe that this happened, but I'm sitting at the kitchen counter. And I don't think much about it when the dogs start barking because generally what has happened is like somebody is taking taking something from somebody else or somebody wants something from something else. And Fiona and Millie aren't really aggressive, but they'll stand there and bark when something's wrong. Well, their barks were pers- uh, just, you know, out of the corner of your eye. You see them all huddled together. You make sure that nobody's bleeding and no dogs are calling for, for help. And then all of a sudden I see, I see what they're barking at freaking snake. How in the world was that snake alive in our house for that long of a time? How? What was it eating? Because that's on my mind, okay? Three weeks, you would, one would have thought all the searching that I've done, all of the destruction of pulling out the fridge, pulling out the dishwasher, pulling out the stove, flipping sofas over, like, where was it? Where was it? Thank you, Ivy. Thank you. Ivy has laughed at me hysterically every time I tell the story, every time that I get on the camera. <sighs> Jamie, close the other live on Suits to Boots. I don't know how to close the other live on Suits to Boots because it wouldn't even let me go live on Suits to Boots. So I don't really know what's going on with Facebook, but, or excuse me, with YouTube. Um, do y'all hear them? They're going crazy. So I don't understand what that snake would have eaten in our house because do they eat dog food? That's the only other thing that is like potentially plausible. But even that, like it's in a bowl. Did the snake make its way out to eat the dog? Like there's so many things that I have questions about. Like how? How? And for anybody saying washer and dryer, so the washer and dryer is on a, uh, like a one foot step up. So there's a one foot base. They're not pedestals. It is actually like a built in foot up. So if I, I don't get me wrong, I'm not naive to the fact that snakes can go vertical, but it just doesn't make sense. And then still it doesn't make sense to what they ate. Cause I don't understand. I don't understand. But anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm editing a video and I see it out of the corner of my eye and I lose my mind. I climb up on the counter and I'm grabbing my phone to call Lester because he's at JNL. And of course I'm home alone. And I'm thinking to myself, like the dogs are in here barking. Like I don't necessarily want them to kill it in here, but I also don't want them to get it so riled up that it's freaked out and it climbs on the counter with me because I have nowhere to go at that point in time. And I don't like snakes at all. And I was so scared. So. So I made it to the door. I opened the door. I played the floor is lava. I wanted to go hide, but I also wanted to make sure that they actually left with it, that it didn't like crawl up anywhere else. Because at this point in time, I was ready to haul couch. If it went under a couch, I was going to haul the couch outside and set it on fire in the front yard. It was that bad. Like they're not knowing that it's been in the house for three weeks was horrible. It's still horrible. And then get it outside. And Christmas is like saving my life. Millie and Fiona are barking at Christmas. I don't know if they think it's a toy, if they want it. I, I don't know. But I'm so still in my head, like it's been in my house for three weeks. I've looked everywhere for it. Where the hell was it? I mean, up and down in light fixtures behind plumbing. Like I have I have gone places that I've not gone before in this, in this apartment. I don't know. But now, because somebody else put this in my head, because somebody put it in the comments, did it, it first of all, some snakes lay eggs and some snakes have babies, correct? Did they do that in the house? Are there baby snakes in my house? Are there baby, they're like to be baby snakes in the house because now I want to move out forever like leave it all here just pack it all up I'm even okay with like the barn at this point in time but how would I ever find those and where 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 would I look 
what's warm enough? The only thing that I would think of that's warm enough for a snake on the inside, because the AC is on, would be like behind the dryer. Too many questions. No answers whatsoever. So I finally, I finally like get over it. I stop like, I stop obsessing about it and just I'm like, well, this is, if this is how I'm going to, you know, meet Jesus, then, then I guess it is. And it's either I'm going to succumb to whatever kind of snake that it is and it's going to eat my face off or I'm going to stress about it and have a heart attack about it. And that's just going to be the end of my days. <laughs> Hey, babe. I am so sorry. You're outside. That's okay. Come, you want to join me? No, forgive me, though. No, come on over. Well, I'm, I, I'm about to do a gift in goodies because, as you can see, they're stacked up. You want a cocktail? No, don't slide over. I will come just come in. by and say hello. Come on in. Hello. Try that. You won't be sad. Okay. What's this? That's my lipstick. You sure? Yeah. What do you think it is? I don't know. <laughs> what would you? What did you think it was? Like, no, if something went through your mind, you're giggling. What did you think it was? I don't know. Why? What else does it look like? If it were not lipstick, what else would no, it? You're the one. <laughs> look at your face. Jamie. Don't Look. put me in the spot like that. See? It's lipstick. Okay. What did you think it was? I Lipstick? That's not what you thought it was. I thought it was lipstick. I'll be moving along now. <laughs> I'll be moving along. You don't want to stay? No, go ahead. Come on. No, I, I really want to do the thing. Did you like the drink? It was pretty good. Yeah, it's, it was just, good. it's just vanilla vodka and pineapple. Okay. Do you want? You really can join me. I would love you to join me. We're going to open some gift and goodies. Okay. <laughs> Did you think it was a tampon? Did you think that was a Oh. What do you think it was? A tickler. I'll just call it a tickler. Y'all. Y'all. What? Anyway. That man of mine. So, I'm finally trying to get over the whole snake thing. And then I open up Facebook this afternoon to upload a reel. And here is Jake and Brianne with a monster of a snake. And then there's things that you haven't seen yet that have happened right here at this property. At least I don't think you've seen it yet. I don't know if Lester's shown that video. Why do you all know so much about what this might be that I didn't know about what it might be? Because it legit is lipstick that I put on my lips. And everybody on here says that there's something that's a little bit naughty. That's a little bit naughty that looks like it's in the same case. And why does Lester know what it is? That's a, that's a better question. Hold on a second here. Lester! How does he know? Come here. Come on over. I have questions. People think that you, you have identified this item as a tool, a device of some sort. And I want to know a French tickler. Where, where, where would you have seen one of those at, Lester? Probably on an accidental. Sometimes things pop up on my phone accidentally. Oh, do they? A silver bullet. <clears throat> and that that comes up on your phone. Once, never again. <laughs> Can I leave now? I have so many questions right well, you now. You just made this very uncomfy for me. I walked into what I thought was a timeout Tuesday, and now I realize y'all got a whole nother thing going. We didn't have a whole nother thing going. We were talking about snakes. Oh, did you show them the one? I can find it. 
Oh God, it's still out there. Uh, it's yeah, right over the fence where we no, tossed it. No, unless the birds have carried it off. No, I told them about how mortified I was that it lived in our house for three weeks and how I'm terrified that there's babies or eggs or something somewhere else. And then I opened up Facebook today and saw. Did you see Jake and Brianne's snake that they got? I heard that Brianne found one in her coop. It's bigger than me. Which is why we don't have chickens here. And then, and then, have they seen the other snake here? at all from you the one in the pond yeah the one that has been sent to the suite by and by <laughs> yeah yeah so oh my god that feels so good and i'm embarrassed for the faces that it's making me make right now oh, why don't you just grab a chair <laughs> no <laughs> i'll be back <laughs> oh, this is not <laughs> This is not, I don't even know where to go now because I just, <clears throat> don't forget we're here. Thanks for today. I promise. I'm, <sighs> anyway, where, where does one go with that? Anyway, Lester, Lester took care of a snake problem in addition to Christmas taking care of a snake problem. So I guess tis the snake season here in texas and the lipstick season as well <laughs> ah somebody says you seem uncomfortable tonight jamie uh, it's just gone off the walls already from where i thought it was gonna go i really thought we would talk about how christmas saved my life then how brie had a scenario and like they got way closer to theirs than i would have ever imagined mm -mm, that's not mm -mm, no thank you um but it's i don't like snakes i'm actually so nervous to walk out to the pond to walk out to the barn like i'm looking i already look down when i walk anyway but now i'm like hyper vigilant about what is going on at all carla says get the dude wipes to clean it up hold on we're gonna talk about dude wipes okay first of all the package of dude wipes is underneath my laptop right now holding that up so I can somewhat look in the same trajectory of two cameras. Uh, whoever sent Lester Dude Wipes has sent us on a spiral. And we've had the biggest disagreement probably in a long time. I, I will say in years over Dude Wipes. And why over Dude Wipes? Because it says that they're flushable. And I say that that is a lie, that that is a bold face lie, or at least that it's good to flush them. Because let's be really clear here. Flushable is quite the marketing tactic because a lot of things are flushable. This is flushable. Uh, these golf balls, you can flush these too. Should you? No. Do, does anything happen to them when you flush them? No, other than clogging stuff. But it is flushable. So Lester and I have this like, I don't know, it was like a Sunday live or maybe it was a Saturday morning live discussion and it keeps going from there. And then today he decides he's going to not only call dude wipes, but he's going to call a plumber as well to try to get some advice because he's just miffed as to why he can't flush those because to him it's really disgusting to just throw it in the trash. It is not disgusting to throw in the trash. What's disgusting is to dig up your sewer and ha or have it back up in your shower or anywhere else because that doesn't work. <laughs> so dude wipes have been uh, quite the discussion here this week. Anyway, the guy he called was not a plumber. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't get to watch it. He just told me that he called. He called a plumber. So, uh, allegedly, they are biodegradable. So, I think I'm going to stick a dude wipe in a glass of water, and we're just going to see how long it takes for that thing to fall apart. And that should determine things for us. Uh, so, 
<laughs> lipstick snakes and dude wipes on a tuesday what what could what could be better in a timeout tuesday discussion than all of that that's what i need to know there's a dude wipes lawsuit julie i would predict that there is a dude wipes lawsuit i would predict that there's a class action lawsuit about flushable wipes not just dude wipes but like there there are a lot of companies that make flushable wipes and just like i said this is flushable too. It's flushable. You can make this go down and you can flush it. Should you? No. No. And I'll stand by that. So it's an excellent marketing tactic. Really is. Um, I haven't looked up the website the, the, for the lawsuit though. Uh, but if they're biodegradable, then maybe, maybe there is some truth to it. But still... I would still think that that's not good for a septic system because I remember a time when there was certain toilet paper that you couldn't buy for a septic system. I remember you couldn't buy color. Do you remember the days of colored toilet paper where you could buy blue, peach, yellow, pink? I don't remember there being mint green, but I do remember that color of tissue and toilet paper. I also remember that you could buy those uh, colored diapers. I remember that. Somebody else has to remember that time. Charmin made them. Yeah. Um, but I remember that you couldn't use blue in your septic. And I don't know. I don't know what the color had to do with it. But I remember that certain toilet papers would say septic safe. The same way of like when you buy a uh, a high efficiency washer when those first came out and they used to like certain detergents would say HE on them to be able to utilize in those machines. Now I think that's all evolved to be able to utilize that but yeah I remember colored toilet toilet colored toilet paper and colored Kleenex and printed toilet paper. Printed toilet paper had like little dotted flowers on it. Um, and we never had that because we were poor, but I, I had a friend's house who had the pretty toilet paper and I always thought it was the coolest thing. Also remember scented toilet paper um, and the Kleenex that had the lotion in it. Now I will say that the last time, like when I got COVID a few years ago, I found some Kleenex that had Vicks in it and that that I could get behind. <laughs> that was fabulous. But I don't think that, I don't think that there's colored anything anymore because it goes into the sewer and septic. And why, why did we need colored toilet paper? That's what I need to know. Why? <laughs> this is the weirdest time out Tuesday of all Tuesdays. They should say septic safe. I do, Does it still say it? I know that RV toilet paper is different than regular toilet paper. I also know that RV toilet paper rolls up in tiny little balls when you use it and it hides in places. I know that because it's super thin and I don't know. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's one ply and it's very different, very different than standard toilet paper. I do know that. <sighs> what a weird day. I'm a little bit blushing. Okay. <laughs> Jamie, you're talking about colored paper. My mom used to buy the pink and green, never blue. I don't, this is really strange. It must have happened at a point in my life before I used to like help my mom go do the, the Walmart shopping. Because I started helping her do, like she would hand me the checkbook and say, go buy groceries, <laughs> probably in high school. Um, so it had to be before 96 ish, but I, I don't remember seeing it in a store. I only remember, uh, only, only remember white toilet paper whenever I started grocery shopping. In the seventies, we had colored napkins that we put on the high school floats instead of those flowers. Oh, that's pretty cool. It was the 80s. Okay. Don't wipe with the Vix Kleenex, Carla says. Noted. I will be sure to not do that. <laughs> okay. So uh, a little bit of a confession here is that y'all have sent me 
some packages and I am behind on opening them. And normally I would not add that to a timeout Tuesday, but I keep telling myself week after week that I'm going to open these and I keep failing because I want to do it to be able to show people and say thank you, but I also just haven't found time to do it. So I'm making myself open a few gifting goodies tonight while we chit chat about things, if that's okay. Sorry. I, I know it, I feel really weird opening gifts in front of people. Um, I feel really weird receiving gifts. Like I'm not a good gift receiver at all. I, I don't feel deserving. I don't feel, um, I don't know. It just feels really, I'm a giver. I, I, I receive the greatest blessing out of giving. And when I receive gifts, I feel like someone had to do something for me and I don't feel, I don't feel worthy most of the time. So I'm going to do it and be brave but I'm just calling it out to say that I'm not good at this. Is that a frog I hear, Nancy? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. So this is crazy. This comes from Sri Lanka. The fact that someone from Sri Lanka sent me something just blows my mind. Also, it was x-ray scanned and checked. How crazy is that? All right. I don't... I'm just not good at this, y'all. I'm so not good at this. But I want I I I'm so grateful and Oh, what what do we have here? It comes from Sri Lanka Post. It says Sri Lanka, a land like no other. It's roots of some sort. What kind of rise? Look, it's already starting to blossom. This is perfect. I want to stick it in the dirt, but I also don't know what it is. It doesn't say what it is. This is what it came in. And all it says is roots. What kind of magical thing is this? Well, I can't wait to plant it. I will plant it this evening because this is ready to, it's already sprouting just right there. Okay. Well, that's a mystery from Sri Lanka. What do you think would come from Sri Lanka? With nothing else other than just says roots, it's roots. Pretty cool. Saffron roots. Maybe, maybe it is saffron. Okay. Okay. Best of Lester. All right. This is from Martinez, California, from someone named Kayla. Thank you to whoever sent me roots. I can't wait to grow it and see what it is. It's going to be awesome. we have here. Hold on. Hey, Jamie, I made you some plant hangers for your greenhouse. Thank you for all your videos and all the time out Tuesdays. Kayla, thanks for being here. That is so thoughtful and sweet of you. So these are hangers. I've seen some of these that hold plants. And I'm going to take a guess here. Yeah, so you put them into this space. And I know this is hard to see right now, but you hang them like this, and then a little pot goes in here. That is so cool. I don't have anything like this, but I have seen a lot of them online. And then she says, and into the garden I go to lose my mind and find my soul. And I'll be honest with you, I look forward to this time of day every day and several times a day. So I wake up and I go feed horses and I walk over and I feed donkeys and alpacas and goats uh, and give a little snack to the ostriches. And then as I make my loop back, I start in this garden here and then I make my way to what Lester calls the botanical garden, which is really our, our landscaping. 
And then I make my way to the greenhouse where he meets me for coffee and go into, um, go into the terrace garden as well. And there is just, there's something magical about what happens from the time that I stop looking at it at night to the next morning. And that short window of time can hold so much. And even whenever I find time throughout the day in between calls to be able to, that was Jamie, the echo. Oh. Um, when I find time in between calls to be able to step out to water something or to go just fidget with something, whether it's in the greenhouse or just out here, pull a weed or two. I truly have found something that really does fuel my soul. And I never in a million years thought that that would be the case ever. So thank you very much, Kayla. That was really sweet. Um, y'all are saying that's called macrame. Um, I've heard that term before, but I have never I've never done any of that or own any of that. So this is a first for me. Very exciting. All right. This I don't know what this is not from the US either because it has a customs declaration. And this, it, it says overseas diplomatic military mail. And I'm not making that up. And it says APOAP. And it is addressed to Jamie at I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. The fact that it says like, down here in the declaration, oh, it's backwards. Down here in the declaration says military. That's kind of crazy to me, a little bit, a little bit crazy because I'm not in the military. I'm grateful for our military, uh, but I, that's not me. Um, both my grandfathers were in the military, but that's as close as I get to having a personal connection. Uh, one was in the Navy and one was a Marine and both fought in the Korean War. This is so crazy. It also looks like it's been, it's been through a thing or two, which kind of symbolic if you ask me. Most of us has been through a thing or two. Oh no! It says, please don't video this box. Okay. I won't do it. But thank you to whoever sent it. Okay. Good thing that letter was there. Because I would have. All right. This one I did open today. And that's when I stopped. And I was like, nope, we're going to save these for Time Out Tuesday. So this comes from Rockingham, North Carolina. Never heard of Rockingham. Uh, makes me think of Nottingham. But Nottingham's not a real place, right? Nottingham Forest. Isn't that from Robin Hood? Robin Hood and Little John running through the forest. Okay. And this comes from Lynette. And Lynette, Lynette sent me some goodies. Sent us some blue hog barbecue sauce. Oh boy, she sent us a lot of sauce. Sriracha honey. I would like that, like a lot. Nottingham exists. Nottingham is a place in England. Oh, but it is also, isn't it also from Robin Hood? Isn't that a thing? Oh, sriracha hot chili. This is fabulous. I love sauces. Legit love sauces. Raspberry Chipotle barbecue and habanero honey mustard. I am excited that I have habanero peppers growing. And, and I don't want to eat habanero peppers, but I want to make some habanero jelly for sure. Oh, no chewing necessary. These are my favorite, and I think I'm addicted to them, she says. And 
They're Werther's. That's awesome. Do you know what I'm going to do with these? Obviously, I'm going to eat some. Uh, I'm going to put some in the freeze dryer because I have seen some videos of people doing that and they look delicious. Oh my gosh, she knows my candy corn addiction. <sighs> Love me some candy corn. I didn't know you could even buy candy corn this time of year. This is so sweet. Y'all are way too good to us. Okay. Should have found this part first. Sorry. Don't let Lester throw them out. He hates condiments. Georgia, I know. Lester has claimed the fridge at the RV, and that's his fridge, and my fridge is here. Now, we can shop in each other's fridge, but I promise not to fill his fridge if he promises not to clean mine out, and that's how it's going to be. This is really sweet. Kindness is many small gestures that together make all the difference in the world. I hope this is a good day for you. I'm sorry about your accident with Rita, but you're tough and pulling through like a champ. I ordered this movie for you right after Dixie passed. It's based off of a true life events, and I believe in things like this can't be explained, and I hope you enjoy it. I ran across this candy corn and thought of you. This is so sweet, Lynette. And, oh, please, please tell Lester I said hi. I will. So the movie she sent me is Adeline. I've never seen this movie. Uh, I predict that this will be a tearjerker movie for me because I can't watch. I'm almost crying right now. I can't watch any horse movie. Even the cartoon horse movies make me cry. And um, also, just y'all being so sweet and thoughtful and kind. And just, I don't, I don't deserve this. <clears throat> Okay, not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I will watch the movie. I probably will not watch it with Lester. I will probably do that on a Thursday night whenever he's not home so I can just let it all fly. Okay. <clears throat> this comes from Holly Becker in Arizona. crazy and sweet. This is a book on growing citrus. I need this book. Today I realized that I have like 20 oranges growing on my tiny little orange tree. And I don't, not only do I not know what to do to keep those growing, but there's so much mixed information online. This is going to be so helpful. Look at here. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Holly. This is so sweet and thoughtful. And look, there's blood oranges. And I have a blood orange tree, too. And it has six little fruits all over it. And I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait. I hope that they come through. They'll probably come out to be the size of, like, a golf ball or smaller. But I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. And I will read this. And it will help me greatly. So thank you. <sighs> See... I cry a lot. I see Brenda says, I cry at a lot of movies. I cry at a lot of movies. And I think that I just like can, Im I can embed myself and I empathize with them. And like the movie that, that wrecked me forever though, that I can't watch again. And I, I, I could barely even talk about afterwards was the pursuit of happiness. It's a Will Smith movie and it probably came out 2010 ish. I'm going to say maybe. Um, I watched it and I ugly cried in the theater. I ugly cried for two weeks afterwards. And then I ran into my brother, Josh, and he said, have you seen that movie Pursuit of Happiness? He goes, I have, he goes, I'm a grown man and I haven't cried before in a movie. He goes, but that movie wrecked me. And all I can think about is that it was really about a man who was doing anything for his kid and would try so hard to overcome and overcome and overcome and but it that is the hardest movie that I've ever watched and I can't ever watch it again and um there's a few others but that one is probably the one that struck me in the most horrid way horrid way 
Okay. I have a few more packages. Are y'all okay with me still opening packages? Because I feel... I, I feel completely undeserving of all of this. And I'm so grateful uh, and thankful. But I feel like... I literally wish that I could send each of you a gift because that is like, that is what makes my heart warm. And I don't mean just like send something like I love to find a gift that is meaningful, that is powerful, that is useful, you know, like for each individual person. And I, man, I really wish that I could do that for y'all. Somebody says a dog's purpose made me cry. I can't watch that movie. Can't do it. There are some movies that I know that I cannot watch. Well, this comes from Hazmat. Not kidding. It comes from Hazmat. It's going to be interesting. Not really sure what to think about that. Oh! This is Duracell, which is a uh, medicine for the horse's hooves. I, I guess I can see hazmat in that a little bit. It is a chemical. Uh, it has iodine in it and a few other things, but it's for, it's for uh, when you want to dry out the horse's hooves. Y'all got that right in a trivia question I asked a few weeks ago. My hands had purple on it. And y'all uh, were able to answer that question. So that's pretty cool. <sighs> okay. <sighs> this comes from, not hazmat, but it is an Amazon package. Let's see here. It has paper in it. APO is a military address. Okay. Well, I can't wait to open that military package. It just says that I can't do it on camera for y'all. Sorry. These should hopefully help keep the pups away from Fred and Frida. Okay. And that is from Abby. So Christmas and Stella will not leave Fred and Frida alone. Specifically Stella. I don't know what her deal is, but she loves them. <laughs> Uh oh, here, <laughs> here comes Stella right now, baby. <laughs> baby, do you want this? She, she. I know you can't see her, but these are so cute. There are four little tiny dog toys in here, and they squeak, and Stella could hear it, which was pretty amazing because Stella can't hear very much at all. All right, and this is, hmm. This says smart extension for your space. And it says that it's a cup holder. Oh, how cool is that? They're like giant uh, clothespins kind of, except for their cup holders too. They can go on our rocking chair. That's so sweet and so neat. I've never seen those before. Here, Stella, your baby. Stella, you want this? She has it. <laughs> Hear it? That's not me. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. My dude wipes need to hold up the camera a little bit better. And my lipstick's rolling away here. I'm a hot mess. You hear it? There is something special. And I came across a reel from a year ago about Stella playing with toys because y'all know Stella came from circumstances that were horrific, like extremely horrific um, to the point that there was no way that her mind was on playing with anything or anything fun. It was strictly on survival. And about five weeks after she was here, uh, somebody had sent us some dog toys and all of a sudden Stella was playing and her tail was wagging her little possum tail had no hair on it at that point in time. And, um, 
to now see Stella play, whether it be play with Christmas or play with Mabel or play with this squeaky toy right here, is just like this profound reminder of how far she really has come. Because people that see her today would never recognize the Stella that she was during that time at all. <sighs> I'm sorry for everybody else that has dogs. Somebody says that these lit up. Did they light up? <laughs> oh, now Fiona's here too. Do you want one too? <laughs> you like it? You don't know? <laughs> she does not know what to think about this. Okay. I just have a few more if y'all are okay with it. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry that you just see the middle of my... Okay. Hi, babies. Everyone thought this was a time for them to come out and play. It wasn't really. Watch your nose, baby. Watch out. Stella! Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. This has circus peanuts. Not circus peanuts. Packing peanuts. I love circus peanuts, by the way. I know that's a weird thing. Baby, look out. Hold on. I'm just trying to get this open. What did someone send? What is this? Stella really likes those toys. Okay. I have to display. Stella, you're getting a little crazy over there. All right. Let's see what we got here. This is... Something purple. What are you? Oh my gosh. This is the prettiest bottle of liquor. I think it's liquor. Fiona, you can't have any liquor. None of y'all can have any liquor. This is you, you may, you, you, um, how do you say this? Plum liqueur, liquor, plum liquor. And on the back it says, oh, it tells me how to pronounce it too. Ume, I was right the first time. Ume is a delightfully tart, mildly sweet spirit that dances on the tongue and buoys the soul. Made with all natural plum with notes of dark cherry, grape, and green apple. Enjoy on ice with soda or with your favorite spirit or sparkling water or sparkling wine. Ume plum and one is a shot of Ume, a shot of vodka, and top with soda, citrus garnish over ice. Well, I guess what we know, what we're drinking next time out Tuesday. This is awesome, but I don't know who sent it. Oh, Virginia Jonas. Virginia, this is going to be exciting. And, and there are four plums on my plum tree. No, I don't think we're going to be making our own plum liquor, but you know, maybe, maybe it's a tiny little jar of jam with four plums if they all live. This is so pretty, though. Like, I don't even know if I can drink it. Look at that beautiful coloring that's in here. Love. Love plums. Okay. I thought Lester was coming back out here to help. I guess that he decided that he wasn't. Uh, oh... Okay, Ooh, this is heavy. Okay, this comes to me from Nancy Meredith and she is in Leesburg, Florida. Okay, she has excellent boxing. Ume, never heard of Ume, never seen it in a liquor store. Oh my gosh, Nancy. Nancy has gone way over the top. <laughs> My heart is covered in horse hair. Accurate. She said this reminds her of the truck at J&L Ranch and it says, it's a goat, my lord, in a flatbed Ford. How cute is that? Boy, do we have plans for that truck at JL Ranch. I cannot wait to show y'all. There are so many signs in here. 
Just some odds and ends that made me think of you. That is so sweet. What? Are, what is this? Aw. This is true. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. And I know that sounds really cliche. This is really neat. But sometimes... I'm guilty of getting wrapped up in the fact of what I have to do today or what I wasn't able to do today. And I get really lost in the things that I was able to do or the blessings that I do have and forget to count those as I'm complaining about the fact that I have yet another Zoom call that's super late or super early or I didn't get to finish you know, my cup of coffee because something happened and I have to constantly remind myself that we're really blessed to be able to living, to be able to live this life and to be well enough to get up and handle the things that we do. So that's a nice reminder as well. Okay. I'm going to pull out one more thing here. That's really sweet. It is a coffee mug that is a flower pot that says plant lady. And I will drink this tomorrow morning. Uh, oh, Lester's not going to match me tomorrow morning. He's probably going to be really upset about that. Thank you, Nancy. That is a really sweet and loaded package of signs for me to hang up. All right, I have I have two more if you're all, if you're all okay. I don't want to, like, wear out my Time Out Tuesday welcome. Stella still has it, and everyone's staring at her, by the way. Okay. One more. That's way back here. Uh oh. <sighs> Ivy! This might be. It says, I'm a survivor donkey and farm animal. Attention, Jamie. <laughs> I wish. That is all Stella making that noise. I mean, yes, you can hear Ivy as well. <laughs> but Stella making that relentless squeaky noise is something else. And, and Abby has jokes sending that here. Oh, This is, this is going to make me cry because y'all pay attention way too much. So the night of the storm... This is from Kelly, and I don't know who Kelly, but this is from someone named Kelly. The night that the water came rushing through the barn, what I used to be able to get the horses in the stalls was this bag of treats. And I said in that video, I was like, thank God for these treats because they followed them. And they, they were excited about it. It wasn't just like hay or anything like that. Like it, it made them come to me. And I used them all. And somebody just sent me the biggest bag of them. Ten whole pounds of treats. This is going to last a really long time. Because believe it or not, I don't feed them a lot of treats. But thank you for being so sweet and kind and paying attention to all the things the donkeys will get some of these too and maybe even annie and indy will enjoy them as well and when i say that we don't do a lot of treats we were guilty in the past of doing more treats than we should have been and those are prior years and as i've learned a little bit more about nutrition and what's good what's bad and what's a little over the top um we've really been we've really been conscious about treats. Now, I'm not saying that they don't get one or two a day, but they don't, we don't do a whole bag a day or anything like that anymore. So we've, we've learned to control our treats a little bit more, but that was really, really thoughtful and sweet. So thank you very much to, to be able to look those up and find where they came from. Those are not things you can just buy in tractor supply. So thank you so much. All right. Last package for tonight. Is Indy wanting to be with her horse friends? Indy is enjoying being with her mama and with the donkeys. 
I think that Indy and Annie are still getting a little bit acclimated to things. And I have a video that will come out probably on Thursday about that. Um, this is really awesome. But they're doing good. Uh, but I don't think that they long to be with the horses like that. I think that they're really content seeing them across the way. Um, and that's a good thing. Okay. So this is really cool. This actually is from a company called Hudson Valley Seed. And hold on, who ordered this? Oh, this says from Rebecca. So I don't know who you are, Rebecca, but thank you. So these are, these are really cool. So this is a cut flower seed collection, which I'm guessing. I've never seen square packs of seeds. This is really cool. So in here we have coral fountain amaranth. Is that how you say that? Endless Blooms Cut Flower Mix. Sounds like we could get into some chaos gardening. Linaria. Don't know what that is. Cosmos. And something called Tiger Paw Aster. That's so cool. I love this box. Like when I get things like this, I don't want to use them because it's too pretty. Then we have a vegetable garden seed collection. These have the neatest packaging. I've never seen packaging like this before. Okay, so we have beets. We have carrots, radishes, beans, and a salad bowl blend. Look at this. Look at this package. The salad bowl with USBs hanging off it. I don't know what that means, but those are so neat. Um, here's my question. So a company sent me seeds plus these seeds. And of course I have extra seeds that I'll bring inside. And I know that people use seed packages for years to come and you can go beyond the expiration date, but does anyone know if I put them in the freezer, will that prolong their life? Is that a thing you should do? I have questions about that. All right. So we also have kale. Oh my gosh. The ostriches are going to flip their lid. I started some kale, but We'll start more. Ooh, banana melon. What's a banana melon? I have so many questions. I don't know what a blazing star is, but I love this package. A dandy collarette dahlia. What is that? Oh, this is called dino kale. I have so many questions. What's a dragon carrot? These are so cool, Rebecca. For the birds flower mix. I wonder if that happens to be like Lester and Carl's garden because their their bird seed flower mix and uh, and garden out there is doing really well. And it's all from leftover ostrich seed. Okay. This is called Goth Garden. How cool is that? Dark and sanguine tones. Boy, there are some words in the back of this thing that I, and it says to start indoors. And then we have something called love in a mist. Okay. I have to do some research on this stuff because I've never heard of half of the things in this box, which is why I'm guessing it was sent to me. But y'all, now I have to, I'm, I'm going to have to have a second garden, a third garden. Lester's going to need to build onto the garden that's there already because I want to grow it all. <laughs> I want to try it all and I want to be able to, to, ex to show y'all and to experiment with it and to taste it. And I'll confess that today I found myself eating peas out of the garden before I got started. I went over and I was like, like doing one last water for the night. And I was like, oh, I'll have some of this and I'll have some of this. Those are never making it into the house ever. Uh, that's pretty cool. Y'all are so kind and thoughtful. 
I don't deserve, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve all the time that you give me. I, I really, I wish that there was a, a more profound way that I could say thank you. Um, Y'all mean so much to me and you give me so much of your time and attention and <sighs> thank you. Thank you for putting up with me, especially through some of the hardest times of, of my life this year and for being there and being so supportive and kind and kind to each other, kind to Lester as he helped me recover as well. Just know that um, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm working through so much here when it comes to the horses. And I'm leaning on people to show me how to work through this, but to work through things physically. And I'm leaning on Lester to be the brave one quite often and we're learning together and I'll say this our animals are healthy I think they're happy they're fed well they have great vet care and um, we have a, a great village of people around us to be able to lean on whenever we need advice and and need some help with some of them. And we try really hard to showcase that in videos and to not act like we know everything. But um, we're real people too. And we go through ups and downs, both individually and together. And some of you can pick up on that instantly. Some of you can maybe just see that things are off or things, you know, things around that. But um, we're all survivors of something. And everybody really is going through or has overcome something. And we take a lot of pride in being able to show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and to be able to share a lot of our life with, with all of you. And I just have to say thank you for being so kind through all of that. So there are a lot of really neat videos thing and things coming out this week. Neat things that we're doing, working with horses and alpacas and donkeys and all the things that the properties hold, longhorns and some adventures as well. And uh, we feel really blessed to have you along this journey with us. For the last, gosh, five years, six years, we've done a lot together. And we may not look like the same people that you started to follow from Plum Grove, but I promise that we've grown because of you. And I mean, I don't mean grown as a channel or grown as a property or anything like that. I think I'm talking about as individuals, we've grown. And um, I struggle really hard with finding the right words to say thank you for, for being a part of that journey and for cheering us on, for putting up with us. But uh, we really are grateful for all the time that you give us allowing us into your homes and phones and being a part of our family. So thanks for allowing me to open up gifts and goodies tonight and for hanging out with me like we do every Tuesday. I'm grateful for you and really do feel like I'm sitting across from my best friends. So I hope you all have a really blessed evening and that you – smile tonight. That's what I hope. So I love you. And I promise there's a lot of great things coming out this week that I can't wait to share. So have a fabulous night next week. 
Ume. Ume. All right. YouTube, good night. I love you.